Hello everyone, I am Radha Kumari Pani welcoming you to today's phrase class. So last class we have discussed about the diffusion. What is diffusion? It is nothing but is the any randomness or any variables that are generally present in materials. And what is the uh, what are the types of diffusion? Also we have discussed. There there are many types uh, like uh, we can say vacancy mechanism or self diffusion or atom interchange mechanism. Okay. So in today's class, uh, we'll uh, discuss about the most important application of that uh, diffusion mechanism that is uh, Kirkendall effect, okay. Uh, among this uh, topic also, we'll discuss about the fixed law and what are the formula uh, from that fixed law and we'll solve one problem. So first, let uh, start with today's class with the Kirkendall effect, okay. Kirkendall effect means uh, let the two different elements are there, A and B of different composition. Okay, and if they are uh, coming closer and they are going to diffusion process, so once uh, what the uh, uh, after the diffusion, so but the boundary between them shift towards the most diffusing species. Okay, see you can see from this diagram that the A is one metal and B is another metal. Okay, they are present uh, far apart from the boundary. Okay, and J B is the diffusion rate of B metal. And JA is the diffusion uh, diffusion rate of A metal. Okay, let's suppose the diffusion rate of A is more than that of B. So what happened after uh, initially they are, they will be present at their some position after the diffusion happen. Let after the time interval T1 the boundary shift towards the most moving faster species. Okay, so uh, I have see, uh, I have said that let the diffusion rate of A that is more than diffusion rate of B. So, we can say J A is greater than J B. So, after the time interval, you can see the boundary shifts towards A and this is known as Kirkendall effect and this is uh, the effect is named after the scientist Ernest Kirkendall and also we can experimentally demonstrate this effect by uh, placing some E0 marker. What is E0 marker? Generally E0 marker is nothing but this is a rod of uh, uh, like of high melting point okay that cannot be soluble between a and b that will be insoluble of high melting point let's suppose two different metals are there of different color block okay and in between uh, them the marker is there after the diffusion the marker will move means the motion of marker will be happen towards the most moving species okay so here we can say usually the lower melting point the element the metal of lower melting point will move faster than that of higher melting point. So here, let's suppose we'll take one example. Let zinc and copper are there. Okay. So zinc uh, will move faster than that of copper because the melting point of zinc is lower than that of copper. So at time interval T0, zinc and copper are there. After some time, let T1, the zinc will move towards the copper very fast than that of copper. So, after zinc and copper will mix to form alloy that is known as brass. What is the brass is copper zinc alloy or we can say that brass. Okay. So, after the time interval T1 uh, like small layer of brass will form after the time interval T2 we can see the middle portion is the alloy between zinc and copper. So, another example we can take copper and nickel. So, in between copper and nickel here, copper will move faster than that of nickel. So, see, here it is the dotted, the red dotted as copper and the blue dotted as zinc, sorry nickel. The red we can say here, sorry. Here we can say the red dots are copper and the blue dots are nickel. So, the uh, diffusing, the uh, diffusion of copper will more than that of nickel. So, after some time interval at T1, okay, the, uh, the you can see the red dots moves more fast than that of blue. Why? Because the diffusion rate of copper will more than diffusion rate of nickel. You can easily demonstrate by uh, seeing this diagram, see that uh, in initially copper and nickel concentration is same. Here in y axis concentration of nickel co copper and the x axis position are there. After some time interval, the copper concentration will goes on decreasing. Also, 
the nickel concentration after the mixing the alloy will be formed that is copper nickel so now diffusional now the diffusional process can be of two types one is steady state and another one is non steady state so this difference between steady state and what is non steady state we can better understood by considering one parameter that is known as flux f l u x flux and that is uh, symbolized by capital j okay and the j can be uh, under can be formulated by the formula that is we can say the flux is number of atom crushing per unit area per unit time so we can say the j is number of atoms flow per unit area per unit time or the unit will be atoms per meter square per second so the schematic view here we can say the concentration gradient that is dc by dx with okay how the concentration gradient variant uh, in steady state diffusion species in non steady state diffusion species so you can see that the c1 and c2 that is dc okay the concentration gradient means that is dc by dx the difference between two concentration a different time interval and the dx is the position so we can see it is the straight line means the concentration gradient here it is constant with time okay in steady state but in non steady state we can see after some time interval at t1 t2 and t3 the concentration gradient is not same it is changing okay so here you can uh, we can say that the concentration gradient is dependable on time here for the steady state the j is not proportional or not equal to function of distance and time but in non steady state j is varying with time so uh, you can better understood by seeing this surface phenomena in say what is happening in steady state and what is happening in non steady state from the previous slide we will uh, know that the steady state the concentration profile okay it is constant with time it is independent of time so the j okay so flux in the left hand side will be equal the flux in the right hand side here but in non steady state that is happening vice versa means the here the concentration diagram like the concentration gradient will follow with time so here in the non steady state the flux in the left hand side will be not equal the flux in the right hand side that is the only parameter we can differentiate between steady state and non steady state that is the flux what is the flux flux is net number of atoms flow per unit cross sectional area per unit time and that is not dependable on time in steady state and it is dependable on time in non steady state so here now the most important application uh, in uh, by following the diffusing uh, mechanism that is fick's law uh, we will discuss the two law fick's first law and fick's second law first we will discuss the fick's first law what is fick's first law said it says that the j the flux is directly proportional to the concentration gradient okay from the fixed fast law we can say the j that is the flux is directly proportional to the concentration gradient and here the proportionality constant the d is known as diff coefficient of diffusion or diffusivity okay generally the coefficient of diffusion that is d it is uh, generally mainly uh, depends upon the structure okay and the properties of the matrix that is the diffusion species and also the temperature at which the diffusion occurs okay so we can uh, see the uh, formula j is proportional to the dc by dx so the proportionality constant is d here the minus sign is there okay why the minus sign because here the flux that is happening below the concentration gradient so the minus sign will be there and also we know that the j is equal to 1 by a dn by dt the number of here the number of atoms okay uh, the number of atoms going per unit area per unit time so if we can equal the two uh, formula that is okay j is equal to this also j is equal to this so this will be this so my 1 by a dn by dt will be minus d dc by dx here we can see dn so from this we can calculate what is dn by dt the dn by dt that is equal to minus da dc by ds where d is the coefficient of diffusion and a is the cross sectional area and dc by dx is known as concentration gradient so by following this formula 
will solve one question okay before going to that uh, we will take one example that is carburizing of gas what is carburizing of gas carburizing means c it is the heat treatment process in which iron and nickel generally treated with carbon gas okay that is known as carburizing so fuselage generally uh, we can better understood by the uh, following this uh, process that is the uh, carburizing uh, gas what is happening here also from this diagram we can see the concentration gradient is constant okay it is constant with time that means it is a steady state process we can say the carburizing or decarburizing gas it follow the steady state process where the flux is independent of time here the formula uh, the concentration gradient can be calculated the following formula that is dc by dh we can say minus c in c in i by c0 let xi by x0 okay we can say or also we can say minus of c0 minus ci x0 minus xi here so this is the formula for calculating the concentration gradient from the graph we can calculate the concentration gradient after the concentration gradient we can calculate the flux okay uh, by following this formula that is j is equal to minus d dc by dx if we know the what is the concentration gradient from the graph also we know what is the coefficient of diffusion d we can calculate the flux now we'll solve one question okay the question says the steady state diffusion is found in the purification of hydrogen gas okay so the purification of hydrogen gas follows the process that is steady state diffusion so compute the number of kilograms of hydrogen that pass per hour so in the question it is asking calculate the number of kilograms of hydrogen that pass per hour let n of hydrogen we will calculate passes per time okay that is per hour throw a 6 millimeter thick sheet of palladium having an area of 0.25 meter square at temperature that is given 600 degrees so here uh, we have given 6 millimeter thick mean that is the distance at which the diffusion is that is dx okay the uh, distance at which the diffusion is carrying out and also we have given the area that is 0.25 meter square assume a diffusion coefficient that is d d is given 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 8 meter square per second and that the concentration at the high and low pressure site okay the concentration gradient means high concentration to low concentration here is the boundary is there let here one concentration is there of high concentration and here the low concentration concentration gradient means always it will try to flow from high to low concentration so uh, at high concentration the concentration is given 2 kilogram of hydrogen per cubic meter of palladium uh, and at low concentration it is given 0.5 kilogram of hydrogen per cubic meter of palladium okay and that steady state condition have been attained so this problems asking about the mass of hydrogen per hour what will be the mass of hydrogen per hour see we have given <coughs> the area that is 0 0.25 meter square and also we have given the dx the distance that is 6 millimeter so we can convert to meter 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 now also we have given the diffusion coefficient that is capital d is 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 8 meter square per second and we have given uh, the concentration of high and lower okay let the concentration of higher is uh, 2 kilogram per cubic meter and the concentration at lower it is given 0 0.4 kilogram per cubic meter okay so we are asking about the number of kilograms of hydrogen per hour so here is the formula we can calculate by following this formula let m is the number of atoms of hydrogen per unit time that is j a t okay so in place of j we can write minus d dc by dx from the previous okay from the previous formula that is happening see dn by dt that is m m is minus da dt 
So here in place of j also we know j is proportionality dc by dx. So j will be minus d dc by dx. So in place of j we can write minus d dc by dx. So by putting all these value we will get what is m. Okay. So now m will be minus d means what is the value of d that is minus 1.7 into 10 to the power minus 8 meter square per second okay into area area in place of area we can put 0 0.25 meter square here time time it is given that is uh, one hour okay here time is given that is passes per hour so you have to convert in second okay so it will be 36 under second per hour now dc by dx the concentration gradient so what will be dc by dx uh, dc by dx how you will calculate minus ci by c0 by xi by x0 so here that is the concentration of uh, from the higher to lower so will 0 0.5 minus 2 by here it will be unit kilogram per meter cube and the dx it is given 6 millimeter means 6 into 10 to the power minus 3 meter okay so this is the value of all this quantity so after solving all this see meters uh, second second will cancel out meter square meter square that is meter to the power 4 here meter cube meter meter to the power 4 okay all this value will cancel out will remain kg per hour so uh, the multiply after the multi and the minus sign here 0 0.4 minus 2 it will be given minus 1.6 so minus minus plus after multiplication of all these term will get 408 okay into 10 to the power minus 8 it will uh, coming upper so it will be 10 to the power minus 5 and the unit will be kilogram per hour so we can write 4.08 into 10 to the power minus 3 kilogram per hour this is the value that is number of atoms of hydrogen that is passing per hour okay so this is the most uh, important uh, formula that is fixed law okay you have to remember uh, the formula that is j and the number of atoms passing per unit area the formula that is jat so in place of j we can write minus d dc by ds okay so this is the end of this uh, today's class in the next class we will discuss what is the fixed second law and the formula uh, behind that uh, effect fixed second law and we will solve another problem thank you so much have a nice day